right after the weather you have today's quartz. I have learned that life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer it gets to the end, the faster it goes. And this is what Andy Rooney said, right, even today, as you are rolling that tissue paper, you can think about your life. That the closer it gets to the end, the faster it goes. Just a post giver for the day there. Hello, good morning, and many thanks indeed for joining us here on the Morning Prime. It is the 3rd of October, 2023, and I'm glad that you've chosen KT News as your channel of choice to inform you, educate you, and entertain you. And of course, today we have Siesa Fiesta coming your way, where we get your prize on what is happening on the political landscape here in the country. A lot that we have to discuss regarding also the high cost of living, where we saw the civil servants who are decrying uh, pecuniary shame. They're saying it is a shame what they take home as their pay slip, and the government should reconsider, especially the burden of taxes, as it were. This was happening during the National Dialogue Committee. And of course, also looking at the dailies, many of you, many of Kenyans are leaving their cars at home because they cannot afford the fuel that is skyrocketing right now. And the cost of transport has shot up. So they've elected to leave most of the cars at home. This is just going to show, or it goes to show how what is really happening as far as the reality of the cost of living is concerned. But let's see what is fresh off the press this morning. And just as mentioned, that is what the civil servants are crying, save us from salary shame. This is what is headlined in the front page of a standard this morning. Cry for help. The Public Service Commission, in a memorandum to the National Dialogue team, has said public servants can no longer make ends meet. In some instances, up to half the employees take home less than a third of their pay. And this story is tucked away on page two of today's standard. The rising cost of living has impacted negatively on public offices, which has resulted in low morale, poor performance, and poor social welfare of officers, some of whom are undergoing depression. This is what Ambassador Anthony Mushiri, who's the chair of the Public Service Commission, said. And some of the recommendations that uh, they are looking at is reviewing of a taxation regime or increase, uh, increase salaries or exempt those service, servicing mortgages from similar levies or taxes. Also, target implementation of a housing levy or make it a percentage of a basic pay, not the gross number of levies and VAT imposed on fuel be reviewed to reduce price of fuel, which will make cost of living calm down. That is some of the recommendations that were floated yesterday, and the figures are broken down for you as well. We have the stark reality here, 21.62% out of 79,253 public officers, 17,132 and less than a third of their salaries. And of 42.83% out of 31,892 prison officers, 13,661 and less than a third of their salaries. 48.55% out of 106. Uh, 667 disciplined forces officers, 51,784 and less than a third of their salaries. And of course, that is beyond the recommended portion that you need to take home. And that is the story that you want to follow today on page two of the standard this morning. Ashagwa's wars scaling Mount Kenya. On the side there, it's all about leadership. Right to becoming regional kingpin is proving rougher than the DP thought. Is not only fighting political wars, but his economic blueprint for region is facing turbulence. You have the story on page six of the standard this morning. Amanda Guto faced 202 witnesses, was an issue senator, and his two co accused will have to defend himself against accusation of a botched scholarship deal lined up to testify. Are parents and students whose dreams for higher education were crushed. The story continues on page 8 of the Standard. Looking at the teaser there, yesterday was a Council of Governors election and governors are seeking also a cover against impeachment. They want the law on impeachment reviewed uh, so that they can be cushioned and you have the story on page 10 and 11 of the Standard this morning. Also looking at the other pages, US Speaker faces ouster of a bill and this is uh, MacArthur there, and uh, we know there was a crisis, right, of, of government shutdown, but that was alleviated. But still now, 
Uh, he faces also Aster. Let's see how that will pan out. You can read all the details there. I tucked away on page 27 of the standard this morning. Get all the wiser as far as financial standards uh, is concerned or financial matters is concerned. And that is tucked away on inside the financial standard cost of living. Ruto advises in a storm, right, over the cost of living that is going way overboard. And will Man U stand and be counted? That is a probing question. And uh, you can follow the story of the EPL on page 40 of the standard this morning. The Daily Nation, travel. Even as the civil servants are decrying the pecuniary shame, president is stopping party for joy riders. This is what is on the front page of the Daily Nation this morning. Ruto stops party for joy riders, cost cutting. They were used to traveling first class, staying in swanky hotels and getting generous allowances for their shopping. And many of the state and many a state officer or civil servants will often find to be part of a delegation heading out of the country. But all this will now come to an end after President William Ruto issued a new directive suspending non-essential travel while limiting delegation sizes, including for the presidency and trimming travel budgets. Will the president succeed this time round? Right. This is a question that you want to also to follow on page six and seven of the Daily Nation this morning. Bomber stocks in limbo as KK as Mio skip hearing. Ruling Kenya Kwanzaa and opposition as Mio Laomoja representatives fail to make their presentations at Bomas as their rival faction played out a game of wait and see with each other. And this story continues on page seven. And this is primarily for them as well, uh, even as we're talking about inclusivity. But oh, the whole talks was predicated on the two. And if it was an OSHA for them yesterday, that is also a niggling worry. You can follow the story on page 7 of the Daily Nation this morning. In the courts, 200 witnesses lined up against Mandigo. Also, we have uh, Cost has the most land injustices cases in the country. More than 65% of land injustice cases in the country are from the Coast region, with Kilifi County accounting for over 2,000 reported to the National Lands Commission. That story is on the back page of the Daily Nation this morning. On UEFA, Ancelotti returns to Napoli with a point to prove Real Madrid boss was sucked by Napoli in 2019. Um, less than an hour after he helped the team reach the Champions League knockout stages with 4-0 thrashing of Genk. And you can follow the story on page 39 of the Daily Nation this morning. On the sidebar, 52 billion shilling staff pensions helped or held up by employers. This is what RBA is saying. The amount of pension cash that employers are deducted from employees but not remitting to schemes has ballooned to 41.8 billion shillings, spelling doom for thousands of workers who face life in retirement without the cash. The Retirement Benefit Authority says most of its employers are quasi-government institutions, mainly public universities. By September 2020, the outstanding amount stood 35 at 35 billion shillings. And you can follow the story on the back page of the Daily Nation this morning. And you know, of course, the wars that has been uh, bedeviling the public universities lately, especially when we talk about cash crunch and also the remittance of this statutory obligation has not been forthcoming. And this is where the problem is arising from. Review impeachment law. Waiguru urges after winning another time as COG boss. You can follow the story on page 44 and 5 of the Daily Nation. And COVID-19 vaccine pioneer scientists win Nobel Prize for medicine. You can follow the story on page 3 of the Daily Nation. This is how it looks this morning. Also remember your Healthy Nation pullout magazine comes in handy for you. The star hiring IBC chiefs new Raila Ruto political war is what is headlining the front page of the star this morning. Their sharp difference in opinion is already playing out before the bipartisan committee. And we have a story on page four and five of the star this morning. And also we can see officers well trained. IG tells critic ahead of the hate mission. This has a lot of criticism sparking. And uh, you can see some of uh, the administration police inspector, uh, administration police service 
and also Inspector General Noor Gabor with some of the officers from the Special Organization Operations Group, I should say, under the Border Patrol Units of AP who are training at Kanyonyo Kitui County. The group is among those to be deployed to Haiti. And that story continues on page six of the Star. And by the way, just a few hours ago, we had uh, the United Nations Security Council having given approval for this multinational police force, which Kenya also is part of amongst many other countries also that are gagging for that particular uh, mission in Haiti. You can follow the story inside the stamp. Experts test drug that makes blood deadly to mosquito. Nandi, imagine a mosquito dying a few hours after biting you, poisoned by your blood. This is an exciting possibility that has already been proven in parts of Kenya. Well, I don't know where this Nandi is coming from, but I think you should start to imagine mosquito dying a few hours of, after biting you. Uh, that is a story that you can follow there, but uh, the Nandi seems to be mi mi misplaced. But you can read the rest of the story on page 9 of the Star this morning. Simple innovations to save millions of mothers, babies. The annual goalkeeper's uh, report produced by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation described where the world has collectively fallen short at the halfway point of achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and uh, particularly in the fight against maternal and child mortality. This story continues on page 14 and 15 of the Star this morning. Now, there is this man who's called Kitovi. He's a composer and a player of KBC Morning uh, Kivoti Tune, now beggars on streets. All right. And this story continues on page 10. Some of the tunes that, uh, of course, if you grew up on those juice uh, of the KBC, uh, you can be intimately familiar with some of the tunes there. And this is the gentleman uh, or the, old, the elderly man that uh, now is begging, despite the fact that uh, some of his tunes were used by the national broadcaster. And this is in light, of course, of many of our artists who are not familiar with some of their rights as far as copyrights is concerned. You can follow the story on page 10 of The Star this morning. And Taifa Leo says, Kanisa Lamhepa Ruto. That is a story there. You saw some of the legislators castigating some of the bishops and clergy of their remarks regarding the state of affairs in the country, especially on the cost of living. Maskofu wa hadi olesapit wa SK na muheria wa katoliki wa ebuka kuwa wembe mkali kwa Kenya kwanza. Ukosoaji kimani shungwa awafokea wakuu wa kanisa akiwemo olesapit aliyekuwa kati ya marafiki wa karibu wa rais wakati wa kutangazwa mshindi wa kura mwaka jana. The story continues on page 2 of Taifa Leo this morning. Waiguru haifadhi kiti sakaja nje and ke kwanza azmio wakati wakata wito bomas that is another story to follow inside the taifa leo this morning all right let's move on and see what we have inside the business daily fuel usage dips to five-year low as kenyans keep cars at home that is what also what is on the phone page of the business daily i'll have indicated this to you that many kenyans right now are leaving their cars at home because they cannot just simply afford the cost of fuel that uh, has actually gone through the roof petroleum consumption falls five percent to 1.01 billion liters drop likely to slow down economic activity and gdp and that is now the tail or the stinging at the end of the tail as far as taxation is concerned and uh, this also is going to ground to a hold or a slow put the economy on a slow roll as far as Economic activities concerned. It says fuel consumption between January and June dropped to the lowest levels in more than five years, excluding the COVID-19 pandemic period with amid high pump prices that depressed demand and pushed the middle class to keep their cars at home. Officials data or official data shows that consumption of super petrol dropped 5% to 1.01 billion liters from 1.074 billion liters last year, while that of diesel fell 4% to 1.31 billion liters compared to 1.36 billion 
in the same period. You can follow the story, the rest of it on page two of the Business Daily this morning. Trigger Foods turn tables on IT farm and liquidation claim is another story you can follow. Our dispute there. And you can follow the story on page two as well of the Business Daily. Now, MPs want Communications Authority to disable Wildcoin Internet link. Members of Parliament have asked the Communications Authority of Kenya to disable the virtual platforms of Wildcoin pending the review of the regulatory framework for virtual assets. Also, digital lenders stock loan below 1,000 shillings on CBK rule. Also, bond trading hits two-year high in returns race. And uh, you have the monthly value of bonds traded at the Nairobi Securities Ex Exchange hitting a two-year high in September as investors uh, sought to secure high-yielding securities issued recently by the government. So you have a story on page 14 of the Business Daily. Allow me to cross over now to Uganda where we have this splash. You've been following the story of the eating of the Uwa Gorilla Manish. There's a scam there and two operators also are sucked into Uwa Gorilla scam. Uh, you can follow that story inside the Daily Monitor if you're waking up in Uganda. And also, soaring. Uh, this is an anti-homosexual homosexuality law case uh, takes shape. This has been happening in Uganda. You can read the rest of the details there. It's not very clear for me on this other end, but you can follow the story inside the Daily Monitor. And Falip Ipupa serenades Kampala with the epic do. You can follow that story also inside the Daily Monitor. In Tanzania, why, why Karyoko is a ticking time bomb? And you saw yesterday the splash there was all about that particular uh, trading center where many of the traders lost their many of your traders lost their valu valuables as the fire raised down the the trading center and that's why we have Karako as a ticking time bomb that needs to be looked into very keenly follow the story inside the citizen this morning all right the new times fighting resumes in eastern dr congo what what's at stake right in dr congo the plan to complete the extermination of tusis was never lost sight by the gen genocide die right I could read the rest of the story there inside the new times this morning and also rwanda mauritius signed ict deal that is another story that you want to follow inside the new times as well rwanda's proposed 53 million shillings aviation 53 million dollars aviation training center what you need to know all that stacked away inside the new times if you're waking up in rwanda this morning and this week's the east african to leave or not somalia mission left in a flat spin troop contributing countries support mogadishu's quest for pose of Atmis drawdown even as they await African Union and UN Security Council decision. But who will pay the bill? Who will pay the bill? That is a probing question there. You have a story on page four and five of the East African this week. Tanzania goes for plan B in SGR project. Officials stand to Sweden, Spain, Africa Development Bank as Turkish contractor derailed. This story is stuck to on page 10 of the East African this week. And bittersweet side of the Ugandan oil gas. From dark paths to new tarmac roads and airport and new iron roof houses, Hoima Bulisa Kikube Moya have a story to tell. And this story continues on page 25 of the East African this morning. The rhetorical cartoons, right? It seems that Victor has actually picked up what uh, also uh, Saifaleo was headlining regarding the church and their recent criticism. And you have their some of uh, the government op operatives and officials now castigating the church. He says, don't criticize, pray for us. Don't criticize, pray for us. This is in the Delhi Nation uh, this morning. I shall be showing what we have in the start as well, carrying also the same, same uh, sentiments that we do have in the Delhi Nation this morning. But allow me just to introduce our panelists this morning who are already here in the studio to just get the introductory remarks before we buckle down to our stories. We are holding court this morning with Dan Manzo, who is a senator of Makueni. Also, we have with us Dr. James Jikal, who is a member of parliament from SEME. Also, we have with us as well 
the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Gladys Woz, and we are eagerly waiting to be joined also by Isaac Maura as well, who is a politician. But a lot we have to discuss just following what is happening recently and taking a scoop of last week as well, where we saw many of the delegates before the National Dialogue Committee presenting their submissions, uh, some with very ticklish issues as well that has raised debates in this country that we shall be delving deeper into. But allow me just to get the introductory remarks. Uh, I begin first with the ladies in the House, uh, the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. Glad it was good to see you after a long while. Yes. Good morning. Last time we missed you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, also, Dr. James Chikal, fresh from Seme. Yes. Uh -huh. Good morning. Morning. How is Seme? Seme is fine. Yes. Yeah. Fresh from Turkana, we have also... <laughs> 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 Where we had... Uh, Marudi, Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> Marudi, Kenya. <laughs> But at least you get a, you got a feel and flavor of what is really happening in the counties. Yes, yes. Despite the fact that you normally get these reports, uh, we had other senators here who are telling uh, chilling stories of what is happening in uh, Turkana. Uh, despite the fact that uh, they are endowed with so much resources, yes. they benefit little, really trickles down to them uh, in terms of resources. But uh, let me just hear from yourself uh, what you actually captured from there. Uh, yeah, Turkana, first of all, is. Uh Wealth in very many things, wind power. Um, this is a place also we had oil discovered. Mm -hmm. And again, Lake Turukana, which runs 300 kilometers uh, in Kenya, has, uh, you know, the Nile patch. Yes. And we discovered that uh, the, the breathing system of a Nile patch is actually very expensive, and the Chinese businessmen are seeking for it because that's what you use to manufacture the, the thread you used in. Uh, uh, in surgery, surgery. Uh -huh. uh, and this is so expensive. In fact, uh, the, with a very big fish, they will just buy, uh, you, you know, the breathing system, uh, the lugs, uh, fifty mm -hmm. Kenya shillings, fifty thousand, and then uh, sell the rest of the fish, three thousand shillings. Uh, and we re we realize this is a potential which has not yet been tapped. Uh, this is something needed very much in the country. Uh, the people were organized in. Uh, Cooperatives. Unfortunately, one of the big fishing cooperatives collapsed in the 90s. Uh, it had very serious infrastructure, and I believe uh, the current current government uh, should really work on that. Uh, and uh, the current uh, the senator and the, the leadership in Turkana, the irrigation schemes, which are poorly managed, you know, the water intakes uh, are highly disrupted by insecurity, uh, so that uh, many many parts of um, Turkana. If you, you cannot travel unescorted, and sometimes even the police fall into the drug net of this fellow. So I think the locals have not been embraced mm -hmm. by the main government over the long time. We don't have this, uh, the Pokos and the Trukanas in, uh, in the police force or in the army, uh, and these are very tough people who can survive very tough conditions. Mm -hmm. So I believe, uh, you know, a lot can be done with the rivers which go through there, a lot of irrigation. Uh, there's a lot of resources there which have been untapped. We went to the court, we mm -hmm. visited the court. It's a very old court, small, uh, colonial one times. And we realized that the Chief Justice had been there uh, a, a few days before we went there. Uh, there's a court building coming up there, one of those big projects of World Bank. Mm -hmm. It had delayed for some reason, I believe. You know, a justice system is very important for the people. Uh, and uh, in my own opinion, I think, uh, uh, Lodwa has really grown, and uh, that region has a lot of activities, but it was not without drama. The day we were taking off, <laughs> the plane developed some uh, mechanical hitches, <laughs> and we were very lucky that the pilot detected it in good time. I felt that it was a little tricky to bundle the whole Senate in one plane. But yeah, that was very unwise. <laughs> <laughs> How come? Uh, uh, and I thought even uh, insurances will have uh, excuses in case of anything. But the pilot was smart enough to cancel the flight and uh, keep us there overnight. But, but you, you can subject the whole country into a constitutional crisis if you a just board all one. the senators in one plane. <laughs> yeah. And then you have a, a mechanical hitch that you did or a technical And we have hitch. no IBC in the country. And and there is no <laughs> IBC still, then we have a whole You, you cannot do division of revenue bill yeah. maybe for a year or yeah. something like that. And Gladys, is, isn't that really something that... Uh, need to be reviewed keenly and discussed I think, because uh, I think that is really telling that you can hold an entire Senate in one plane. There's a mechanical challenge 
God forbid that nothing really happened. But should there and this was be a anything? Hydraulic system. So I, I yeah. think this is, a, this is standard security protocols across mm. the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. And even it's even implemented in families. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that you don't have the children, the parents, all in one... In one car. In one, maybe, yes, yeah, yes, in one, in one uh, place, uh, you know, exposed to risk. Exposed that is to the risk. way, they, the, the way it's, uh, it's called. And I think it's... Uh, they talk about it loosely in government circles from the time that uh, I've been... For the years I've been in, in government, but somehow it's never taken seriously. And uh, the argument, for example, that... At, uh, at Parliament is that, oh no, we booked everyone, the procurement people have booked everyone uh, on Kenya Airways, you know, and because we have a contract with Kenya Airways. But I think it uh, calls for, mm -hmm. for more innovative ways and uh, some in initiative on the part of those who uh, undertake those procurement of tickets, because today, if you're going to the coast, I mean, there's many, many available flights. You can split up people. Some can go on, K on Skyward, Safari Link, mm. uh, you know, 540. There's lots of flights. Yep, but that was that not really Kenya. Was, was the, this was, was uh, the Skyward. Skyward, mm -hmm. and uh, the plane developed uh, hydraulic, you know, hitches, and that's common with the planes. But it can be very tricky because you see the hydraulics is what helps the plane turn, is what helps the wings, and is what helps the landing. So, mm -hmm. so ordinarily, uh, uh, hydraulic is a life life. Of is, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. That, but yeah. also, you cannot be fixated just on the uh, on the flight on the flight that is the usual scheduled flights to that area, mm -hmm. because you have big numbers. You could also take. Chartered, chartered flights, which comes to probably even cheaper. I told you this one was This particular flight was chartered. But mm -hmm. can't you stagger the, yeah, the, the, stagger the, 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 the passengers? Yeah. The Some can yeah. go through Eldoret because there's a flight that goes through Eldoret to Turkana. There's one that goes directly. And then you can have a third plane. So it's just lack of initiative mm -hmm. and innovation. Or in right. thinking. Or, 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 or in then thinking. Of, then, of course, uh, I think that is something that uh, Parliament has to think about to come up with. Uh, under the Parliamentary Service Commission, yeah, and because that's under HR, Indeed. you could actually come up with the uh, travel protocols. Mm -hmm. yeah, because right. it's clear, it's for example, if the speaker is not in the country, then I have to be in the country. If he's not in Nairobi, then I have to be in Nairobi. But there's no time at any one time that both of us can be. Mm -hmm can be out of town and that's a rule that we are told mm -hmm. that um, yeah uh, we've seen happens. also the president and the chairpersons also of committees have been encouraged that if the chairperson is not in the house then the vice chairperson must be in the house mm -hmm. so there's always someone at any one time so those protocols run through from being on duty the manner in which you travel how long you travel <laughs> yes and what about uh, with the president and the deputy president being out of the country at the same time Yes, but I, th I think they take different flights. They take different flights, yes. but uh, in terms of just uh, the protocol that you're talking about, is it mm -hmm. uh, uh, the wisest of fashion to do it? Uh, with them, they, you see, with the president, they, they also have the cabinet, they have the head of public service, and so on. So there's more to, their work is done through various ministers. It's not even a matter of uh, works, it's just a matter of their, their own security and for the sake of the country as well, because number one, number two is away. We have not a speaker uh, of the National Assembly and yourself, all those particular ranks now, being the people now who are heading this country. That's why we, begin, we need to begin to develop those protocols. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we've become a country of oral literature. We do not document <laughs> anything. We say it. I like it. And when you say it, <laughs> and repeating it even ten times, doesn't stick as a rule. That's why you must write it down. Yes. yes. As a regulation. I then think, it I think that's, that's today's quotable quote. Yes. We become a country of all of literature. <laughs> yes, yes. There's nothing really documented. Have you ever gone to the public service? <laughs> Sometimes I go to a, a, a public office and I say, I remember it was the time when I wanted to convert my electricity from postpaid to the token system. Mm -hmm. And every time I sent my driver, they said, oh, no, 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 in Kitusuru we don't allow tokens. So finally I went there and I said, could I get a letter in writing that Kitusuru as an area is exempted from getting tokens? And no one would give me a letter in writing, but they were happy to tell me verbally. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, 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 write it down. Give me a letter 
I, re I put a request in writing, so I want a response in writing. But that is how you find there is a lot of um, uh, poor service Indeed. and poor huduma in the public service because mm -hmm. we never write anything down so that I can decide what the rule is mm -hmm. at any one time mm -hmm. because it's not written down. If you want to ask about something, just give them a paper. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Or but tell them, go to our website, um, the rules are there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And all when you can, we don't seem to learn also from history. Uh, when this country had a tragic, uh, you know, a tragedy happening in the Ministry of Interior, where you lost the minister and the assistant minister, when the chopper went to, down. Right? To see a plane crash. Uh, well, yeah, we, the Godana. Yes. Yeah, the, the, Godana, the one that yeah. was in Marsabit. Godana, yeah. Yes. yes. Marsabit and then I, Busia, Godana as well. I spent the whole night doing the postmortems. <laughs> and Busia. Oh, on, on that day. I, I was just going to say it has happened. It happened with that one of the Godana team mm -hmm. and the one in Busia. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you the basic issue that I see. If you have overbearing uh, senior people, then junior people stop uh, going Thinking. by the book. Mm -hmm. yeah, they stop going by the book and they stop thinking. And basically, they fold their hands and wait for instructions. So what is really important is once the rules have been put in place mm -hmm. and they must be, they are written. I was seeing yesterday that the peers and uh, the minister mm -hmm. should not be out of the country at the same time. I think they were just being reminded. Mm -hmm. It is not, the, it's not new. Uh, so, those are things that are there, they are written, but over time, when people start practicing, it is normally when you have changeovers, mm -hmm. and uh, if people who are new are overbearing, actually what the civil servant say, God, you see at the end, and as they go, <laughs> the practice also goes. So, increasingly, things that are written down, you even can't find the circulars. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when it is in their interest, they'll pull a circular you've never heard from. Mm -hmm. Even that one they were telling you, show me something written. Mm -hmm. they, they just decide they're not showing you because now you're putting them in a corner. Uh, but actually, you, many, many, many times, mm -hmm. uh, things are actually in writing. They're there. What is difficult, particularly people in authority, mm -hmm. particularly we, the political class, is taking advice from juniors when we want something done. Mm -hmm. and, and once you start doing that, then now people go what they want. They start their thinking or they, or they wait mm -hmm. for instructions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if the person who is giving instruction, if you go into a new office, the first thing you spend, that's why I'm against this thing, that a person cannot be say a CEO for three years, for more, for three years, twice or three times. There's also value in experience. People should just be stopped from work when they are inefficient, not they have been there enough. I don't know what that enough means. They, has, they have to go the whole gamut think, of the tenor. Also, I yeah. think the responsibility also falls on us as a senior public servants because you find that, uh, let's say you go through a security check, many times I see my colleagues do not want to be checked. But the moment you intimidate an officer not to search Exactly. Them, then you're allowing them to lax the rules. And I, I'm always one of those people who said, no, search my bag and search me. Mm -hmm. Reason being, I don't want to get on this aircraft mm -hmm. or enter this building, building. and then when they search, uh, there was a problem and they search who is it who wasn't searched, mm -hmm. and you're one of them. So I think also to encourage and, and take pride in agreeing and actually patriot, it's, it's patriotic to agree to go through a security check because you're not only keeping yourself safe, but you're keeping other people safe. Because you may think, okay, I'm okay, I haven't carried anything. The problem is someone else who's dangerous will be able to access. Mm -hmm. uh, to access but the problem building. is... Uh, if you look at uh, what happened in Westgate, Westgate, uh, at that time, before the bomb blast, it was uh, before the attack. It, was, it had become very careless. Many times I saw my security people just pass through the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the metal detectors put their firearms and nobody they stopped them. <laughs> no, nobody stopped them and it wasn't noticed. In fact, it's become like a part of the deco in every building. It doesn't really check. Just do a, the media, you should do a survey of all the, those fancy machines uh, that, uh, that are in every building. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't work and if they work, nobody bothers about it. So I think 
the, the, it almost seems like the intention was, because that was the fashion, everybody wanted to procure that big equipment because there was a kickback about it. But there wasn't really a commitment mm -hmm. and the need to use it. Mm. How many buildings do we know that the CCTV cameras don't work even though they've put them there? They have electric fencing, but the electric fence is switched off most of the time. Uh, I think a casing example I see is at the Milimani Locots. Mm -hmm. Their machines don't work. Mm -hmm. The last time I went there, mm -hmm. they, you just walk through them. They don't work. Nobody looks at it. There is no screen. Yes, but they will tell you pick, put your bag here, go through the security check that doesn't work, and then the, pick it. But, a is, but the conveyor belt is an X-ray. Yeah. But the X-ray machine doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. So you use the side. You put it on a cupboard and pass through. And that is the case in many, many uh, buildings. So we have to reevaluate. Why did we spend so much money on this? Indeed. Yes. Indeed. And Indeed. what helps when you have designed structures and you've gone through all the reasons why, the background reasons and the technical issues, you reduce it to SOPS, standard mm -hmm. operating procedures. 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 Mm -hmm. Now, when you start violating that, you are dead. And then when people come and they're not trained, why? Why are there standard operating procedures? Then they start wondering, why am I bothering with this? So standard operating procedures, routine things that must be done, that routineness, there is a lot of logic behind it. So it may look simple to you. Like, let me give you, if we get into a, into a building and say uh, you have to sign your name in, and say you are in a big building, you are even a, a minister or a PS or a senior person, and you come over the weekend because you can go to work, and they say, don't sign in. And I'm Moshimua Peter too. You will find a guy who says, oh, Moshimua, please write. That's the right person. Mm. Because should something happen to that building, you will be lost without trace. No, also you can get into actually legal trouble yeah. because if a crime is committed yeah. and you hadn't declared yeah. your presence, mm. then obviously you become a suspect. A suspect. Mm. Yeah, but I think we can comment there are a few places in the public service that I've seen is working. One of them is the SGR. Mm -hmm. The SGR have remained meticulous to serious security checks as people Mm -hmm. uh, are going in there. Boarding. So mm -hmm. I hope to God they never relax. Indeed. Indeed. Who, is yes. who is running it? I have no idea. <laughs> 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 there's, there's only one lapse with the SGR. Let me leave that. Yeah. Because they have the lapse, yeah. dots, all, the, all the, <laughs> the bags are checked. And I've actually seen, twice I've been there, and I've seen them uh, offload mm -hmm. people's bags. And uh, it's, it's, so they, they, it's the one place I've seen a semblance of order, which gives me great comfort because then I know that I'm safe, that there will be no bomb loaded onto this, mm -hmm. um, onto I, this. I, I, and so it's, it's a huge, it's carrying many people, so it's yeah, really yeah. So security a should huge be target. Yes. Yes. But, but yeah. unfortunately, Dibal, and uh, I've, I've really tried to engage uh, the Minister for Interior and the security systems, uh, the, the problem is uh, the many kilometers of uh, lack of serious surveillance of, of the railway. Uh, and uh, in, in, in Makueni County, it goes close to 200 kilometers. And sometimes I've been uh, on ground, you know, in Makueni, like around Kibwezi, those areas. And this plane is, uh, this train is just going through at a very high speed. Uh, but the bridges are unsecured. In fact, you don't have really path, uh, a road, uh, and this runs together with the pipeline. You should have a, a connecting road whereby uh, police could easily do surveillance. I know there are some, some policemen on duty on that particular one, but a lot of times for those 200 kilometers and the times I've been in McQueen, you don't see them. So I've kept on reporting and sensitizing uh, the locals. Should you see something unusual, uh, please get in touch with the security because you have done all that nice checkup mm -hmm. in Mombasa and in Nairobi, mm -hmm. but on the way, if you have a bad on the, uh, you, you, you know all those sections, all those bridges. Uh, and I think it is something we, as Kenyans, we should be concerned generally on all, you know, security issues. So that Kenyans are alert. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment we relax is when something happens all of a sudden. Indeed. Just like, uh, you know, the case of the 1998 bomb blast and uh, now the Westgate and the Kikambala. It's all about keenness of Kenyans generally. So that if you notice something unusual, to quickly alert the security system. But I think also the security system should be uh, very keen on that also, um, facilitated properly. 
uh, and, and, and the, there should be a lot on surveillance because I think that's one of our biggest risks in the country. Mm -hmm. Right now, I just want let to me tell you an interesting bit. How can we can, can, whole, we, can, we, can we hear from uh, Isaac Mahura actually who is uh, here? Uh, <laughs> it's catching up. I, I, I can give as a with this one to start on. <laughs> you, how have you and the whole team is connected? It even goes back to employment process. If you don't use proper criteria on employing people, particularly if there's nepotism, any senior manager will tell you that people who are not employed in the correct procedure, people who probably didn't qualify and get in, you find them when you step through the system, mm -hmm. they're harder to manage. They have a sense of, of, of entitlement. Yeah, of entitlement. And so that even the and then what happens if that is very frequent, then people say, okay. That is where the, and not now, then it becomes people copy. So if you let systems work the way they are designed, design systems, then let it work. And then you have when should what be done, Thank even in, in maintenance. So that even you almost made it robotic. If maintenance is to be done every week at eight, it's every week at eight. Thank you. Right. Let's hear from uh, Isaac Mahura. And uh, I wonder how I'll capture now your eyes uh, having the Fedora Cup uh, with my camera. <laughs> Will we get a bit? <laughs> we need to tilt it back a bit. Just a little bit like that. Yes, yes. But you, you need to get used to this new look. This is the new look. <laughs> <laughs> the new look what is well, informing well, the new look? Uh, no. It's just rebranding yourself. Well, it's rebranding myself, but also it's just about light and ah. sun. Okay. And I'm more comfortable with this. All right. Than my usual. Not that I will abandon it completely, but uh, I prefer it. You prefer it? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. And uh, of course, we look forward to hearing from you as well in, on a matter of issues. But we're discussing, I don't know if maybe you can, uh, if history may bear you down to what Bonaya uh, Godana happened uh, with the tragedy with the aircraft. I think it was a military aircraft. Yeah, then, and uh, we're just talking about the traveling protocol. Uh, we have uh, Senator Manzo, who is coming from Turkana. They had, uh, of course, that aircraft hitch, and, all, and all, most of the senators were aboard. Uh, so, we're just talking about, God forbid, if something really happened on that particular plane or to that particular plane, then what, what will have happened to our senators? Will have been a con in a constitutional crisis. Yeah, and we thank God that it didn't happen. And now that uh, Senate always does Senate Machinani. I hope this is not the last that we are hearing of it, <laughs> because some of them came to the uh, UDA uh, National Governing Council meeting in the morning. But yet it's true. I think it's, it's important that uh, we have security measures, especially around uh, the VIPs and the very important constitutional office holders, so that then that does not happen. And, and I, it has happened before, as, as, as my colleagues have put across uh, the issue of uh, Bonaya Godana, uh, Bishop Wako, uh, you know, the then uh, member, uh, MP for, uh, Minister for Labor, I think it was called Muhammad, if I'm not, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong, they all perished in one aircraft. So, and of course, remember Jordi and... Uh, Bishop Wako was also in that particular... Yes, yes, the, the Bishop Wako was in that. So, the one that Godana was in... Tragedy. okay. Yes, yes, in Virginia. And so, that uh, so the, the, the husband of Naomi Wako, mm -hmm. the Deputy Majority Whip, who is served in the Senate. So, I think it's... it's um, it, it's uh, it's important that we, we 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 make sure that that has not happened. But also, even the the, the condition of our of some of our aircrafts. I mean, some of them. I remember there is an aircraft. I, I don't think they really they they really fly anymore. But some of those are very old and are very in very poor conditions. And, and they, they, you can see like they're just refurbished for our kind of market. <laughs> so I think that also is very very important to be looked out into and also. Uh, yeah, to improve on the air safety of, our, of, of, the, of, the, of the people that are in office because uh, it's dangerous. I, 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 I like the idea that the president and the deputy, they travel in diff on different uh, planes when they are even going to the same venue. And, and that, is, that is safe enough. And, and of course, these are military uh, you know, choppers. So I think uh, that is commendable. But it is also true, um, maybe the VIP should also reduce the travel. Now that you look at the newspapers, yeah, yeah indeed. Uh, this is what uh, I wanted to really tell yes, uh, 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 yes. Talking about traveling, yeah. uh, where the public service has also been, uh, we can see lately looking at the Auditor General's reports regarding the, the eye popping figures that we've been having from travels. And this is where the President is coming in handy right now and coming in uh, very hard to stop 
what he says here, party joyriders, cost cutting. But everyone is asking, we've, we've seen this before. We've seen this before with the Passats, with the fuel guzzlers. Uh, will this time forth see, be, will we realize any discernible difference? Let, 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 let me go back, uh, let me go first on that one. But you know, there was a time we went to, to Chicago, Illinois, in 2016, August, for some National Council of State Legislatures. Now, this is a conference that has got two components. You have the local 50 American states, mm -hmm. They are meeting to discuss their own issues. Then there is an international component. And Kenya had the hugest delegation of 70 persons from both the national and county government, followed by Nigeria. Uh, and then the question was, what, 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 what had we gone there to do? Of course, they will, they will be happy to host us because we are buying tickets using data airlines and such other, you know. We'll be in their, in their, in their hotels. We'll go and see like Michigan. Michigan and McCormick Center, where President Obama made his first speech as president, his acceptance speech. And all that. But if you look at it, really, it was not necessary. So I think, personally, I strongly believe it needs to be capped. Uh, Kenya uh, has had the embarrassment of sometimes going to benchmark on ideas that were actually borrowed from Kenya. Uh, you know, you go to Israel to benchmark about farming, you're told, actually, some of these uh, seeds are from your country. It's <laughs> embarrassing, you know. If you go to, uh, you know, a country like Malaysia, you're told. But you are, this is a, we implemented your your public transport system from your from your policy. So th th that kind of thing needs to stop. Uh, but maybe it would be better if they. Are, well, I know this is not popular, but I think we overpay people when it comes to per diems. If they are to be reduced, if for example today people are just to be given uh, money for maybe a quarter per diem and the hotel is paid for by government you see the reduction in terms of the number of people that go to New York. Uh, I'm sure even the recent delegation to the UNGA, the 28th uh, United Nations General Assembly, must have been over 100 people. And most of them really had gone there to shop and to accompany and to get an opportunity to get the per diem. So I think, I strongly believe so. There was a time the former, uh, the former clerk of the National Assembly, uh, may his soul rest in peace, Justin Bodhi said, Parliament at that point in time had spent 2 billion shillings on travel alone. Uh, of course, all of us here have been beneficiaries of those travels, and they are nice. You just go to a country, and you earn money, and you come back home rich, and you can go to Harambe and give 100,000. Uh, but I think it needs to stop, because uh, we also make a mockery of ourselves out there. Yeah. Too many Kenyans. Of course, the, the, the good thing about it is that Kenyans then are very respected internationally because they are very well represented. That for sure cannot be taken away from us. We may also be very much involved in many, many of the global issues, but do they percolate to the ground? Uh, do they come to the municipal level? Are they just uh, uh, international, you know? So that, that, that also cannot be gainsaid, that yes, we have actually, we have a very good footprint internationally, uh, right. maybe as a result of that kind of spreading too thinly, but then it costs us a little bit too high. Right, but we just want but to... even to say that, I think uh, we should be careful not to do a blanket ban on travel as if, I think what the president is talking about is the non-essential travel, travel mm -hmm. but also that when you must travel, try and have a lean team. Because a lot of also important things, we do not work in isolation as a country. I know that uh, in the recent months, uh, I traveled to Cameroon, and it was, it was one of the most significant uh, 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 trips I've ever attended. Uh, this had to do with the African, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Mm -hmm. You saw that our president has been ch championing uh, in that in Africa we need to begin to begin to rethink about not using dollars when we trade among ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that we need to have an African Central Bank mm -hmm. so that we trade in our own currency, and moving towards having an AU passport so that I don't need to get a visa to go to Cameroon and it's just for Cameroon. Whereas I could apply for a Cameroon visa and it, I'm given an a AU visa which is what happens if you apply. I could go to the, to the French, if I'm going to France, I apply to, for a visa to go to France, but I get an EU visa. So that way, it promotes trade and movement among our countries. For Africa to be able to survive and to be able to relaunch itself as a superpower, the only way to do it is to promote uh, uh, the, 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 the Africa continental free mm -hmm. trade movement and uh, agreement. And that agreement, yes, it's been signed by the heads of state. In fact, 44 African countries have so far 
signed that particular agreement. Uh, the African Central Bank was supposed to come in in uh, in uh, place by 2024, but now it's been moved forward to 2028. Reason being, it was discovered that it is imperative for the individual parliaments to be able to pass domestic laws in each of their countries to be able uh, to remove tariffs uh, and, uh, and, uh, and duties uh, in, the trans in the free movement of goods among ourselves. And the only way you can do it is to assemble the, the, all the speakers mm -hmm. of the various parliaments, the 44 countries that have signed, mm -hmm. to say, let us agree on a time frame within which you can amend your laws. So that as Kenya, we were taking stock and said, we need to make amendments to the following laws and make a commitment, then come back home and use that resolution that you had at the, the meeting of all the speakers in the parliament to say, to persuade your own country to pass the laws. So some of them are significant. If you look at matters relating to climate change, again, the amount of work that was done when we had the Africa Climate Summit here in Nairobi was significant and transformational because you cannot sit in isolation in your country if, if you, because it doesn't matter whether Kenya plants trees, whether we bring down our emissions and so on and deal with plastic and e-waste and so on, if our neighboring country doesn't do it, mm -hmm will all be affected. If you look at what is affecting Africa today, we only emit 2%, um, not more than 2% of the emissions that are causing climate change are from Africa. 3%. It's other, yeah. other countries. Mm -hmm. So you have to have an international platform to be able to take that on. When the president uh, went to Paris and made that uh, revolutionary call out on saying that the polluter must pay and they must take responsibility and they must buy carbon points from us and, and so on and they, they, they must give reparations for causing climate change which is not affecting them. They are the polluters but the highest impact is in Africa. So, there is, so let's isolate and say essential travel and non-essential travel. Significant travel, so maybe it's coming up with a, a, a guideline or a scorecard where you say attended this meeting, but this is the outcome of it. Thank you. If that can be evaluated, even if it's by a committee right. or a HR department in another government organization, it does help you to be able to hold account and decide which ones are necessary or not necessary. Yes. Right. So, so we had the Public Service Commission uh, before the National Dialogue uh, Committee, and uh, they're calling for a review of ta national tax regime to help Kenyans cope with the high cost of living caused by new taxes, saying Two-thirds of a public servant's pay slip is gobbled up by taxes and expenditures, leaving them high and dry. In his submission to the National Dialogue Committee, the Public Service Commission Chairperson Anthony Mushiri says the situation has led to a surge in psycho support requests from public officers, which uh, catapulated by an astonishing 84% this year. Among some of the notable figures who also presented it include the Attorney, uh, that Attorney General Emeritus, that is Amos Wako, who proposed that IBC serves, servers be opened after every general election to ensure closure after polls. And uh, as KTN's Emmanuel Toll reports, the committee now says it is running on empty, depending on a well to finance its operation. The sixth day of marathon oral submissions from the public to the National Dialogue Committee started with a damning disclosure by the Public Service Commission on the effects of the new taxes to the public servants with the PSC Chairperson Ambassador Anthony Mushiri telling the committee that public servants had been forced to take only a third of their payslip home after heavy deductions due to the new taxes in place. co chairs the Commissioner's access to the Public Service Payroll Management System which shows that out of 79,253 public officers in the civil service, 17,132 representing 21.62% are less than one-third of their basic salary. 
Additionally, out of 31,892 officers in the prison service, 13,661, which is a 42.8.3% and less than one third of their basic salary. Mushiri revealing that the situation had seen a spike in cases of employees seeking psychosocial support by 84%. Data held by the State Department for Public Service shows that 12,532 public officers sought psychosocial support in the financial year 2022-23 as compared to 6,616 in the financial year 2018-19, representing an increase of 84%. PSC is now recommending a review of the new tax measures to cushion Kenyans from the ravaging effects. Our recommendation was to maybe mitigate, either put the housing levy on the basic salary or progressively increase it. This session also saw the country's longest serving Attorney General Amos Wako make his submissions calling for the opening of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission servers after every presidential polls to ensure openness in the election process. That a law should be enacted to make servers automatically open and accessible to anyone that as soon as the presidential elections are declared. Wako, who was central in the coming up of the 47 counties, courtesy of the 1992 Districts and Provinces Act, also delved into the clamor for additional counties. If you think that there's a merit in either adding and either reducing, uh, maybe you recommend that the matter be separately handled properly by another body or whatever people to look into the matter more and more carefully. But the reason why we don't have Mwingi County today is not because another person was given a county. It is because somebody slept on their job. The Attorney General did not gazette Mwingi County alongside Tarakanivi and Makuweni. And as the committee received views from the public, it also took the opportunity to express its frustration for lack of funding, revealing that it was running at the cost of a well-wisher. We uh, unfortunately have no facilities. We are here to get a shilling. Uh, even the waters and the conference facilities, we are here courtesy of uh, a well-wisher, uh, one of our civil society organizations that have been meeting the conferencing facility costs, including our teas and light meals when we have a long day like today. The IBC selection panel was also among those who presented albeit in camera. The National Dialogue Committee will now be concluding the process of receiving public memoranda and oral submissions as the Azimio Moja One Kenya Coalition and the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance are expected to table their memoranda tomorrow. Emmanuel To, KT News, Bomas, Nairobi. Grab a copy of the standard as well to just give you all the details regarding the pecuniary shame that the civil servants are really talking about on uh, that particular forum that they had yesterday. It continues the pace today. And of course, when we circle back, we shall be looking at this and a lot of other issues as well that has been raised during the